We are in Adobe Illustrator now, working on top of our refined sketch and using the shape tool to start building these individual paths that I just have as fills with no outline, as black fills. But I came to my first stumbling block trying to match my sketch here, which has a shape with rounded edges with something cut out. So what I did is I built the under underlying shape, and then I built another shape and just colored it white, right? But what I need is to actually take that white and punch it out of the black. And the way we do that is with something called the Pathfinder tool, which can be found under Window. And really, the tools we're going to be using the most are Layers and Pathfinder. So I'm actually going to push those into the sidebars here. There we go. So in, in my layers, I need to select both of these paths. If I do it with the large selection tool, I can hold down shift and select both of them. And you'll see how they're both selected with the little red dots, because this is a red layer. I can also just do it directly within the layer box. But I want to make sure I know what's selected. These are the two overlapping paths. Then I go to the Pathfinder tool, and I'm going to use the minus format. So what does the minus format does? It creates a compound shape and subtracts from the shape area. Now, did that do what I wanted? It doesn't look like it. <laughs> so let me do Command Z. Command Z works great in Illustrator. Let me make sure both are selected. And then let me try that tool. This is why Illustrator is really annoying. It did what I wanted. You can see that it punched that hole. Now it's called a compound path because it took what were two paths and it put it into one, right? It's just a complicated shape now. I use the second one because I'm punching out a white shape that's on top from a black shape that's underneath. But you can play with these, and if, if it does something you don't want, just hit Command Z, and you'll experiment and find it for the different situations. The other one that's helpful is the Merge tool, right? So if you layer a bunch of shapes on top of each other, you want them all to be one shape. Merge will get rid of the seams in between. All right, I've been able to just copy and paste, right? Command C, Command V, get all these, these nice rounded rectangles with the same roundedness all in line with each other. And now I punched a nice little highlight out. So what's next? Well, on my sketch, I have a wedge. So this is a different kind of shape. Now, I'm going to be all about efficiency. I'm going to use the selection tool, select one, copy, paste it, move it over, line it up, just like I have been doing. But now I'm going to use the small selection tool, the white arrow, and I'm going to tug at its corners. So I'm going to click on just those anchors. Actually, here's an even better option. So I want to tug it from two ways. I'm going to use the lasso tool and select just the top edge of that. And I want to use then the small selection tool and then tug it out. And it will move those anchors at an angle. And I can do the same thing over here. And move them at an angle. Now this is where it gets trickier because now every anchor point matters, right? It's a straight going into a curve, going into a straight, going into a curve, going into a straight, going into a curve, going into a straight. This is a more complex shape than I have here. Maybe I want it to be that complex, or maybe not. And so this is how we start to modify our shapes. So using the shape tool is great just to get started, but then we want to be able to modify them build onto them. Whoops. So there are different tools for that. The one that's 
came with Illustrator when it was first released is the pen tool. The pen tool has a bunch of tools within it. It has the add anchor point tool, which at any point on a path, I can just use the add anchor point tool. The shortcut for that is the plus sign. And I can add an anchor point, which then allows me to use the small selection tool and tug that anchor point, right? It's got the delete anchor point tool. So if I want to simplify something, I can just click on these existing anchor points and get rid of them. Sometimes that's what I need. Right? And you can always use Command Z. So this is getting closer to the shape I want. Then there's what is called the anchor point tool, which I think of as the convert anchor point, because there's two types of anchor points. There's anchor points that allow for straights and anchor points that allow for curves. And an anchor point can allow for a curve on one side and a straight on the other. So I'm going to add an anchor point here just so I can show it to you. I'm going to tug it out. This is really annoying about Illustrator. I add the anchor point, but you see how it's, it's a solid color? If I really want to make sure I've selected it, I have to hover over it where it's white and then click on it. Because sometimes you'll have multiple anchor points selected. So right now that anchor point is, is straight on both sides. Now when it's straight on both sides at a corner, it will give you the option for rounding that corner, but that's not the same as creating a curved anchor point. That's just spreading those anchor points out into two. But it's a handy thing to be able to do. But Command Z, Command Z. How do I convert that to being a curve just in that one anchor point? Well, I use the Convert Anchor Point tool under the pen. And then I click on it, and then I drag out. And when you click and drag in Illustrator, when you're using the pen tool, you are creating curves. And then those handles can be independently curved. So with very few anchor points, you can get a pretty complex shape. Now this is what's hard about customizing shapes. This is a great shape, but it is not equal on both sides. And if I want it to be equal on both sides, what can I do? I'm going to use the large selection tool. I'm going to copy and paste it, then move it off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it so that it's on a perfect horizontal. So my base is now on a horizontal. And you can see that the top is not. I can hit Command R to have rulers, and I can drag out guides. So I'm going to drag out a guide right in the middle. And how can I make it match side to side? How can I get true symmetrical design? Well, I can first tug this anchor point, try to get it to be a true horizontal. The purple line will show me when I get there. And now I can pick which side I want, which side looks better. And I can modify it. So this one, I think I just want to round that corner out a little bit. There. So I'm liking how this side looks. So this is what I do. I am going to delete. Well, let's see. I'm going to use the pen tool. This is using the pen tool and add an anchor point right here and right here, just on the other side of halfway. Then I'm gonna use the delete anchor point tool. It's all under the pin tool options, and I'm gonna delete all those other anchor points. Then I'm gonna use the large selection tool, select this, copy, paste it, right? Then I'm going to right click on it, and say transform reflect. So this is like how you flip things horizontally or vertically. When I reflect, I want to reflect it vertically. This is so bizarre because it's the opposite terminology as Photoshop, but to reflect something vertically means to flip it horizontally. <laughs> so think of the mirror. Then say okay. So that gave me the horizontal flip. Now I've got it exactly the same on both sides. 
Now, the reason I did that is this shape, which is the shape I want for here, I had to build this way on a horizontal. But I need it to be combined into one shape. And right now it's made out of two different paths. So this is all about using Pathfinder, right? Even your guide will be on a separate path. So what I do is I select both of those. I'll hold down Shift or Command, select them both. And then I'm going to use the Merge Pathfinder tool. And it will combine them into one shape. Then I can use the large selection tool, the black arrow. And I can tilt it. And I have to do it kind of by eye. Try to get that angle exactly right. Line it up with the angle of what I had previously. That looks good. And then I can turn off the one underneath it. Where is that one? It's this one. And now I've got that really even shape. Now that's trying to be really technical and use the lines to really, there we go, that's even better because that's centered. Use everything to line up perfectly. This is a good time to save it. So I'm gonna say file, save as, and because I'm working on it right now, I'm gonna save it as an AI file an Adobe Illustrator file, and I'm going to call it SP22. And it's going to go, I'm going to put it into my assignment four folder. But I'm going to save this in a few other places, or a few other formats too, because what if I don't have access to Illustrator and I want to keep working on it? I'm going to say file, save as, and then instead of an AI, I'm going to save it as an SVG, a scalable vector graphic. And I'm going to show you how you can open that SVG in a browser-based program called Vector that's actually part of the assignment directions. And then ultimately, when we're all done, we're going to save this as an EPS. So these are the, the different vector formats we're going to learn. Because an AI file can't be used by Photoshop, but an EPS file can. And an SVG file can't be used by Vector.com, but it, or an SVG, an EPS file can't be used by Vector.com, nor an AI file, but an SVG file can. Okay, I'm just going to minimize Illustrator for the moment, and I'm going to go to the assignment directions. And you'll see up near the top, it gives you a link to Vector. This is what you could use at home to mess around, play, practice, if you don't have Illustrator. It is a similar tool, but very different than how Illustrator looks. So you just sign in with an email account, and then I'm going to create new. Actually, I'm not even going to create new. I'm going to open an existing, because I saved as an SVG. So I need to find my SVG. There it is. Look how each one looks different. AI will show you, your Adobe Illustrator file will show you what's called the artboard and then your image on it. The EPS file will just show you your vector shapes. And the, the SVG file will kind of force it onto a letter size piece of paper. But all the vectors are there in all three. This will be the last thing I show you. And remember, I have lab hours open to you. Hmm, I'm in trouble finding it. I'm just going to find it directly off my desktop. 
maybe off my recents. 